viewers, you're watching Sahara TV, and I'm Chika Odora. We begin our show today starting with the conviction of Nigeria's James Ibori. And on the phone via Skype, joining us in Nigeria is Dele Mamodu. We all know Dele Mamodu. He made his name as the news editor at Weekend Concord before he became the editor at Classic Magazine. But he is perhaps the best, uh, most well known for being the founder and the publisher at Ovation Magazine. And last year, he contested in the 2011 Ni Nigeria presidential election. Mr. Mamodu, thank you for joining us on Sahara TV. Ah, uh, hello, Chika. Thanks for speaking to me today. Yes, no problem. So let's jump right into it. James Ibori. Between the years 1997 and 2007, Ibori siphoned off an estimated 250 million U.S. dollars that should have been used to improve the lives of the people of his Delta state. And of course, he used it for his own use. And finally, he pled guilty to charges of an estimated 79 million U.S. dollars. So, uh, Mr. Mamodu, what do you think this conviction means in terms of the fight against corruption in Nigeria? Uh, well, I'm one of those who have always maintained that uh, we've never been serious about fighting corruption in Nigeria. Uh, it would amaze you to know that uh, James Ibori, uh, going by Nigerian standards today, will be uh, a small fish in the big pond of corruption. Uh, there are so many uh, governors, ministers, civil servants, who are billionaires, if not trillionaires, working freely on the streets of Nigeria today. Mm -hmm. uh, Ibori's conviction had to come from abroad. Uh, I doubt if anything would have happened if he was in Nigeria, but he was not in the good books of the present government, and he tried to run away from them. Unfortunately, he ran into trouble mm -hmm. in Dubai, from where he was uh, deported to London, and uh, where he met his own justice. Uh, it's a shame that we have so many government officials who cannot distinguish between their private funds and government funds. Uh, as you rightly noted, whatever money should have been spent on developing our nation is being squandered. And uh, for what reasons, I cannot understand, because I believe you don't need a lot to survive in life. And if you do your job well, the prayers of the people of Nigeria will follow you for the rest of your life, mm -hmm. you and your family. Uh, it's a shame uh, that we are being convicted abroad. It's a shame that we have to wait. Uh, for the laws of a foreign land to catch up uh, with some of our leaders. So, Mr. Mamodu, can you confidently say that if it had not been for the United Kingdom judiciary system, Ibar would have been a free man? Can you say that with, for, with full confidence? I have no doubts at all. I can say that with all the confidence. I mean, there are so many between 1999 and uh, 2012, we must have produced over 50 governors in Nigeria. I'm not aware of any who have suffered Ibori's fate locally. Mm -hmm. I, I don't know of any. Right. So do you think that this is at least a victory? It may be a small one, as it seems like you're implying, but is it nonetheless a victory? Oh, it's a major victory, and it shows that you never can tell what will happen tomorrow. I've always maintained in my this day column uh, that there is always a day for the owner, every day for the thief, and there is a day for the owner. Uh, a day will come when the monkey will go to the market and will not come back. So this is an example of that. So those who think nobody can touch them today, all it takes is for them to make one wrong move sometimes mm -hmm. and something will happen. Uh, it's just a shame that we cannot have a uniform standard in Nigeria to prosecute corruption. Right. And uh, as far back as 2007, uh, I had written an article where I explained clearly that if we want to fight corruption, there must be a uniform standard. You don't wait until somebody gets into your bad books, then you send the FCC or ICPC after such a person. Mm -hmm. uh, what they've always done here is to victimize their enemies. If, for example, you want to contest against the incumbent president of Nigeria, then they can rake up some mud against you. That is the tradition, but that should not be it. Everybody who goes into government must definitely declare his assets and do so publicly so that if there are people outside, if Mr. Mamodu says, I have only one property, 
if there are people who know that I have 10 properties, then they can come up and say, yes, this man is lying. Or if a man goes into government as a certified pauper, a poor man goes into government, and within two years, you are living in a palace, it should be obvious to someone that you are thinking with the resources of the people, and that should be brought out publicly. So these are things that we need to do. I mean, I've had interactions with a lot of African governments, and I know that there is nowhere where corruption is as endemic as it is in my country. And it's, it's, a, it's a shame. Mm -hmm. uh, the politicians are taking over all the resources. And uh, the kind of figures, you hear these days, nobody talks in millions again in Nigeria. Everybody's talking in billions and trillions. And uh, it, it's all unbelievable. I mean, if you hear the kind of money we've wasted on fuel subsidy, uh, for example, you, you'll, be, you'll be shocked that a nation that shouldn't have spent maybe more than 250 million if there was a subsidy at all, spent over 2.6 trillion. And nothing's going to happen. Right. Well, now, let me cut you off right here. His conviction yeah. has been hailed by several organizations around the world, including Human Rights Watch. So I just want to read uh, to you a quote from the Africa director at Human Rights Watch. That's Mr. Daniel Bekele, the uh, director there. He says, the world has just got smaller for government officials who believe they can loot their country's resources with impunity. By prosecuting Ibori, the UK authorities have struck a blow, not only against financial crimes at home, but also against impunity for corruption around the globe. So do you think that the Nigeria judiciary system should be embarrassed that this is happening not on their own turf, but in a foreign nation? No, it is the biggest shame ever against our judiciary. Mm -hmm. I mean, is it what even makes it more shameful is the fact that Great Britain stood to gain from the proceeds of corruption in Nigeria, yet the government of Great Britain said, no, you cannot bring this kind of money to our territory when you are not able to explain how you came about it. Yeah. I mean, that, that, that is serious. And that is how you know a serious government. You know, you steal money, you take it to another man's country, naturally you will expect that country to be happy that, okay, these foolish people are going to bring their money to us. But Great Britain is a good example of a great nation. And they said, no, you can't do this. We have our standards, and we're not going to allow you to corrupt those standards. And we, I hope our judiciary are watching. I hope they are listening. Mm -hmm. And I hope that they feel a sense of shame about what has happened to us. Mr. Mamoda, you just mentioned standards. And you have to admit that in Nigeria there is a cultural standard where people feel the need to flagrantly and flamboyantly display their wealth. Would you agree? Yeah, it, it, I mean, uh, that's a cultural thing, but it's all in Nigeria. If you go to India, if you go to China, if you go to different places, uh, they, they have a culture of displaying. Uh, but if, for example, you've made your money legitimately, you can fly private jets, you can do, I mean, we have 19 year old people in Hollywood who are living big. But how many but people in Nigeria have legitimately made that money? The people who are actually buying these cars and buying limousines and private jets, how many, what percentage has actually made that money legitimately? And you mentioned that India and China have the same culture. Those two uh, countries also have corruption as well, especially India. So this yeah, culture I, of I, I, display I, 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 ostentatious you know, wealth, it's yeah, deep rooted. I, no, uh, so I will subscribe to the you know, uh, impression that Nigeria is the only corrupt country in the world. Uh, from what we read everywhere, we have seen institutions, mm -hmm. even in Europe, uh, that popularize billionaires overnight. There are people who do institutional crimes, you know, and we've seen examples of people who do insider deals in the stock market and things like that. So, but that is no reason to criminalize everybody. What I am saying is that in Nigeria, of course, there are, I know of so many hard-working Nigerians who have made their money legitimately. Nigerians are among the brightest human beings you will find anywhere in the world. But it's just a shame that when you have a sore on your body, it affects the, the, the entire body. That is what has happened now. All the politicians who are stealing this money in Nigeria, I'm sure they are not up to a million people. So you are not going to criminalize 159 million others because of 1 million people. I mean, there are market women, 
there are artists, there are musicians, there are all manner of people making money and working hard to make that money. But Mr. Lamont, do you think them. that do you think that Nigerians are celebrating the wealth of these men? Do you think what I didn't catch Do you think that Nigerians are celebrating <clears throat> the wealth of these big men and the looting and the lifestyle and the culture? Is it celebrated? There was a song that came out, Yahoo! I mean, just the whole culture of corruption. Do you think it's somehow celebrated in Nigeria? No, no, Yahoo! was just a music in the, in the, in the area of entertainment. And that music was celebrating the culture of corruption. So do you think this is a problem in Nigeria? No, I don't think it's a celebration. It, it's like reporting reality. Reporting the reality. Job, the job, yeah, the job of a reporter and the job of an artist is to reflect reality. Okay. So Do you think that, that Ovation Magazine is reporting reality? Yes, I knew that's where you were going and I was waiting for it. Yeah. We report reality. That's our job. Just like you also report reality. That's, that's the job of a journalist. Yeah. I've not seen uh, any journalist in the world uh, who would seek, for example, an EHC clearance before you would talk uh, to a subject. Unfortunately, for version anyway, we use more pictures. We don't talk, we don't write. It's more pictures. So there is nothing that could be more realistic than pictures. And those pictures are actually things you can take to court to say, yes, I saw the house of Mr. Lagbaja in Ovation, mm -hmm. and then this is evidence that a man who was earning 20,000 naira could not have built this. Right. My job is to show that reality. My job is not to prosecute. Well, I'm glad you said that you knew this is where I was going. That shows that you're a reporter yourself. <laughs> oh, yeah, because I'm a reporter. Of course. And, uh, of course. I've interviewed people all over the world, and I know uh, what questions are likely to come. And I get these questions every day. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I watch CNN every day, and when they report to some of the laboratories, Nobody will say they were promoting or encouraging or celebrating terrorism. Yeah. They just have to report everybody. So, Mr. Have, you ever, have you ever personally met uh, James Ibori? Have you met him personally? Oh, definitely. I don't know of any journalist in Nigeria who would not have met a governor or a minister at one time or the other. Well, tell us about his, cult about his character, his personality. Can you give us some notes that maybe perhaps a lot of people don't know about him? I don't really know much about him because we don't in the post politics innovation. We are an entertainment magazine. But like I said, I mean, if you are in social circles, you would have met who is who uh, in the Nigerian social circuit. So definitely I've met him, but I've never been to his office or his home. I've never even been to see any government official in Asaba. Mm -hmm. So I wouldn't be able to say much about him. I mean, we just meet at functions like every other editor or publisher will meet them. So he has been featured in Ovation Magazine? Not directly. Okay. Not directly. He, he has not been featured directly in Ovation. I know the only thing we ever did was an advertorial for Delta State, but not Ibori as a person. Right. So you're, so you're saying that Ovation does not speak, but it definitely shows pictures. I know that you know that pictures say a thousand words. Yes. So when people are seeing these pictures, are they perhaps thinking, oh, you know, maybe if I can just, you know, go get money from here and there, I can be featured as well. Do you think that it perhaps keeps silent on what these people are doing to gain this wealth? No, the job of an entertainment magazine for us is to take pictures. Political magazines like Tell, yes, go into politics. We don't deal with politics. And uh, it's the job of every publication also to take adverts, if there are adverts or advertorials. And you do take adverts on Sahara reporters. I don't know of any media organization that will survive uh, without adverts. I've seen a lot of adverts on Sahara. It does not mean that you subscribe to those companies. What right. do you do? Yes. So do you think that perhaps by speaking, using ovation as a medium to speak, you would lose some of your advertisers? No. As a matter of fact, not at all. Speak, so you're comfortable as speaking as out, your advertisers are okay. I write in the appropriate medium every Saturday, which is this day, and I risk losing my clients by writing those things, but I don't care. Okay. I put my country first. There are not many people who write the kind of things I write who do business in Nigeria. I hardly even live in Nigeria. I'm moving all over the world doing my job, you know, and for me, it's not about losing clients. I'm not going to lose my clients if they don't like what I'm saying about them. Mm -hmm. Okay, one, another question for you, Mr. Mamodu. 
Would you think it's accurate to say that some of these corrupt officials use Ovation Magazine as their own personal photography book? No. As a matter of fact, if you read Ovation, we deal with less than 20% of government officials. We deal with regular people, market women. We deal with artists. It's an entertainment genre. And, and so, we are not dealing with, if I was dealing with a lot of politicians, maybe by now we would have closed shop. But I deal with people who have been dreaming for years that one day when my daughter is getting married, I want to see the photographs in Ovation. And I know that we've never published innovation that has not been published in all the other newspapers and magazines in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. The only difference is that our quality is world class. Right. Okay. So you don't think that Ovation is helping to promote uh, or glamorizing the lifestyles of the rich and famous at all? But I repeat, there is nothing we've ever published that has not been published in this day style, in Azure, in Vanguard, in all the newspapers that I find all over the place. Okay. So you seem to have a lot of opinions about Nigeria not doing what it can to fight corruption. And last year you contested in the presidential election. If you had won, uh, what would you have done? What measures would you have implemented to really tackle this issue of money laundering in Nigeria? I mean, the first thing in leadership is trust. You must win the trust of the people by living above board yourself. If you tell people to tighten their belts and they see you... I mean, wasting their resources and everything, it will be difficult for you to find people who would believe in you and follow you. Mm -hmm. If I are the president of Nigeria, the first thing is to cut this culture of waste. We're wasting our resources. And as I said, I mean, I've had the opportunity of living in other African countries. Uh, the Ghanaian president, the former president, uh, John Kufo, lived in his own house for, for eight years. We lived on the same road. I see no reason why the Nigerian president, even if you cannot live you know, in your own house, but you, you won't spend one billion to feed your family in a year. The current president of Ghana, President Atamil, lives in a housing estate, drives to work every day, and I see no reason why a Nigerian president, especially with the acute poverty, staring us in the face, I see no reason why we cannot try to downgrade our lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I believe that Nigerian leaders are too ostentatious, we spend too much money on frivolities, and that's the first thing we need to cut. We have enough resources. I mean, the way they are calling the figures, we know that Nigeria has enough resources to take care of our people. Yeah. But unfortunately, we don't have enough for the greed of a few of us. Speaking of resources, you have been an advocate of uh, agriculture in Nigeria. So how do you think that we should boost our agricultural sector? Oh, it's very easy. The first thing is for the government to be ready, to be willing and ready to invest in it. Uh, I can confirm that as far back as 2008, the Federal Ministry of Agriculture and Water Resources in Nigeria produced a document under President Yadwa, a fantastic document about investment opportunities in Nigeria's agricultural sector. And they broke down everything. I read that document and I'm wondering what is wrong with our people. Those who took over from Yaradua were working with Yaradua. Why can't we have a continuity in government where we can then look at the various opportunities that are bound in Nigeria? Uh, but unfortunately, if the willingness is not there, I think our oil is our biggest undoing. Uh, I, I, I can tell you that there is hardly anything you want to plant that you will, will not grow well in Nigeria. Okay. The world today is talking about organic products in agriculture. There is no better place to get that than in Africa. Nigeria today has a total of Greek land of over 79 million hectares, out of which only about 44 to 45 percent is, is being cultivated. Right. Uh, we have a fraction, you know, surface water of over 269 billion cubic meters, most of it being discharged into the Atlantic Ocean. We have everything, but unfortunately, we are not unnecessary those resources. And if I have been the president of Nigeria, I can tell you that that would be my ultimate priority. That alone will create so many jobs for our jobless youths who are roaming the streets today without any hope in hell of finding anything to do. So that's what you would do if you are president. But what about the current president? What is your assessment? Do you think he is providing jobs for our jobless youth? Do you think that he is adequately fighting corruption in Nigeria? No, not at all. I want to read something that you, uh, you uh, stated in your editorial. 
Uh, when you were saying that we need a radical president. But he said, fellow Nigerians, I'm amazed that the fad in Nigerian government circles today is to label every critic as an enemy of the government. Please permit me to speak for myself now. I am not an enemy of good luck, Jonathan. I have no reason to be. He did not engage me to demonstrate against any of the cabals in Nigeria. So yeah. what is your assessment overall? Well, my assessment is that uh, Nigerians are very disappointed. Nigerians believe that we have not changed the way business is run in Abuja, and Nigerians are desperately asking, is there a solution, is there a way forward? How do we get rid of these people if they don't perform? One year into this government, some people are already clamoring for a second term. We can't be a serious nation and be doing this to ourselves. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is my assessment. Okay. Mr. Mamodu, I want to read a question that was posed to us from one of our viewers. Uh, it says, when James Ibori's photo was still wanted, you were hanging out with him in Abuja drinking champagne. Any, any response to that question from our viewer? Well, unfortunately, I didn't hang out with anybody drinking champagne in Abuja. And Abuja is now in one of the favorite places I go, unfortunately. I'm wanted all over the world. I go around the world. I've, I've operated, I'm sure, in, in a couple of uh, countries. And uh, I won't have time to be hanging out and be drinking champagne. I told you, I'm one of the few editors or publishers who has never been to the government house in Asaba. He was the governor of Nigeria for eight years. I knew him one on one, but I've never been to his house, to his office. I'm not one of those people. I mean, I see, I don't see how a journalist who say, I don't know a governor. That is impossible. There's no journalist in Nigeria who doesn't talk to governors. I'm sure you interview, you, you must have interviewed governors on Sahara reporters, mm -hmm. you know. So, uh, so if okay. interviewing a governor then becomes drinking champagne, you know, we, okay. we are used to those uh, use of language in Nigeria. We are very used to it. Yeah. So I'm not well, we actually have the photo on screen right now, and I can clearly see uh, a tan kaftan that you're wearing behind Ibori, and he's holding a beautiful bottle of champagne. I don't know where this picture is taken. And you saw me drinking the champagne with him. No, I don't see you drinking the champagne. You're sitting behind him. That photograph was taken at the 70th birthday of Mrs. Ojora and all journalists, all the documentary. Okay, the 70th birthday. birthday. Yes. Okay. So, yes, yeah, 70th birthday of Mrs. Ojora. I remember that picture very clearly. So, if I go to a public place, I shook hands with Fashola at that same party. I shook hands with Saraki at that same party. That is courtesy. How long ago was this photo taken? I'm sure you didn't see me drink champagne with them. I mean, that's. That's clear. Okay. Well, how, how long ago was this event? Oh, that would have been, yeah, I'm sure, in the last three, four years. Okay. It took place at the Eco Hotel in Lagos. Yeah, that was in Lagos. That's where Saba and that's where Abuja. <laughs> so, okay. I remember, but, I mean, I, I, I rarely attend events, but I remember that particular event very well. Right. So what do you think needs to be done? We're, we're partying with these people. We're taking pictures with these people, corrupt people. And we're not doing anything. So what needs to be done? Uh, I can tell you that Mary King took pictures with, I mean, America's hated president, the president of Iran, when he came to New York. President of... Uh, oh, yeah, if I met Osama bin Laden, of course I won't put my pictures away from him when I'm interviewing him, I'm talking to him. As a matter of fact, a, a good reporter is as good as the, the access he has to people. Our reporter today is very effective because you have access to everybody and you don't practice censorship. You talk to everybody. That is the circle of innovation. We talk to everybody. It's for the readers now to judge and say, yes, this is what we feel about this particular person. So, in, you know, in events like this where you're rubbing shoulders with clearly corrupt people, what goes through your mind? Are you thinking about the money that they're stealing, or are you just trying to ignore everything that's in their pocket? Like, what goes through your mind? Uh, Chica. Yes. If talking to a leader or a corrupt man means that a journalist is corrupt, so be it. No, definitely not. I would disagree with you on that point. But my question oh, yeah. is... When you're what rubbing I'm shoulders with these people, do you have, I'm sure can you see the dollar signs on them or do you ignore what they're stealing? Because I don't know how I would personally handle, you know, being next to such a person. 
Oh, no. I, I, I will talk to, I will interview anybody on the surface of the earth. That's my job as a journalist. And I stand by that. Okay. So, can you just answer the question? Do you think that you should be, you know, thinking about the money that they're stealing, or should you ignore it? Should you pretend that you don't know? Because I've seen every Saturday. If I was afraid of them, I wouldn't be writing a column that criticizes them every day. If they were my friend, if my life depended on them, would you rather be afraid of them every day? If they were my friend, if my life depended on them, would you rather that I take money and not criticize people? I, all I do is my professional job. I don't go beyond advertorial. Was James Ibori a friend of yours? I'm not a criminal, but advertorial. As I told you, okay. we don't even deal with up to 20% of government people. Every editor in Nigeria would have attended press conferences, would have published press releases at home. So how can you leave those who deal with these people? They, they are sharing land, they are sharing properties with them. I didn't tell it. And not, you know that for a fact, that you can check it, you have the, you know, the, 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 the way we go to construct what I'm telling you. People get lands in Abuja, the get lands in Lagos, I don't have any. Check it. So, I am so confident about what I'm talking about. The source of operation, of course, has attracted all kinds of comments. But like I said, the difference between us and the other publications is that we publish a world-class magazine. Very beautiful. We have been doing it for 16 years. Yes, we are doing the kind of rubbish that people do all over the places. Nobody will respect us. There is no way I go today. There is no one who would point at me that that boy came to my house last night to come and beg for money. Nowhere. There is no minister. I mean, as a presidential candidate, we were invited to also work. I went there, sat down, I did not wish I can't. We did not have. As soon as we finished our meeting, I left. Okay. That was me. The problem is that people judge you by what they expect you to be. But I know myself, and I'm saying with every confidence, that while journalists, while publishers are hobnobbing with people in high places, I can tell you, I doubt if I know three dollars one on one, you will be shocked. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you will be very shocked. Yeah. Well, you know, Mr. Mamoto, I'm sure that you know that yeah. a lot of publications around the world go through a very strict process of filtering donations and advertisers. Is there a similar process with the magazine, Ovation Magazine, or do you just kind of accept money from anyone? You see, I, I don't know why the interview has turned to a critique of Ovation. Because when you rang me up, what you told me was that we're going to speak about Ibori, and we're going to speak about agriculture. But now, I was dominating almost 80% of the interview. I wouldn't uh, say 80%. I, think, I wouldn't yeah, say 80%. Uh, that, that's my assessment. That's my assessment. I think we have fought this issue. We've answered it. Checked anywhere. And you will know that I, most times I don't even know the events that will go innovation. Because there is a process. You want to get married. The process is you call a pastor. You call a musician. You call a little bar. You call everybody, and my job is just come and take pictures of what happened at the place. Mm -hmm. How can you now be responsible? You leave somewhere there, you leave Alibaba, you leave the place who officiated at the wedding, and the man who bought his camera just to take pictures. So he's the one encouraging corruption. I mean, that logic, I think, is very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me just make it clear. This is certainly not a critique. This is just a conversation. That's fine. No problem. It's a fair deal. So, what are your plans in the future? Do you want to contest for any political positions? I think I feel uh, that uh, the country is ready for my kind of leadership, or why not? Mm -hmm. uh, I have a vast experience, not just at home, but abroad. I know what I want. The, the only reason I want to be the president of Nigeria is that I can see that this thing is not rocket science. I mean, I've seen people who don't even have the kind of endowments that we have in Nigeria. They are doing great things. Go to our next job neighbor in Kotonou, President Yaribori. The man was a banker in Togo. He came back, contested the election. Today they are building flyover, they are building beach houses for their people. They are, they are resurfacing their roads. They are improving their infrastructure. If you close the southern border for a few days, Kotonou will be in trouble. Wow. Yes, these guys are marching, they are marching forward. And these are the things that have pushed me. Go to the Gambia. 
I mean, the man who is in the Gambia, the Gambia is a man has met a couple of times. He was a soldier who transformed himself into a civilian president. But as people today, even if they are complaining about dictatorship, they can see, they can still see something. We can't see anything with all our trillions and everything mm -hmm. that we spend. So it's a shame. Uh, but if I have the opportunity, I know that I'll be able to improve the lot of my people. Well, thank you so much for your passion. You know, I can hear it clearly in your voice. You seem to have a sense of social responsibility. Thank you very much, Chica. A man without passion is a dead man. <laughs> I've always been very passionate. I would even have been more passionate today, but for the flu, you can feel it from my voice. Well, you're certainly so, not a dead man. Yes. And on that note, I want to thank you so much for coming on to Sahara TV, Mr. Mamodu. Thank you, Chica, and have a lovely day in New York. You do the same. Bye. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye. Viewers, that was the one and only Dele Mamotu, the founder and publisher of Ovation Magazine. He was giving us his thoughts into the conviction of James Ibori. He says that it is a shame that he was not able to get a conviction in Nigeria and that foreigners are having to handle the legal affairs of Nigeria. That was Mr. Dele Mamotu. Up next on Sahara TV, we're talking to citizen reporter Mr. Kaiode Ogundamisi. We're still continuing to engage with you all about the conviction of Ibori. And we have Skype calls coming up next. So stay tuned on to Sahara TV. I'm Chika Odua.